do you want to be able to use your old tablets like this iPad 2 here as a high quality server side picture frame or just log in from anywhere your iPad your iPhone and have the ability to look at some family photos well if so I got a solution for you so stay tuned hey guys what's going on so in today's video what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be walking you through how you can go ahead and build a server side picture frame so if you have an old iPad or even old tablet or an old phone for that matter and you don't know what to do with it, it's too old to run any new native applications I'm actually going to show you how you can run a picture frame off of that you can hang it on a wall and it could be completely server side so you never have to worry about taking it down putting an SD card in it or anything like that it'll all be controlled remotely off of a server now the server I'm going to be running is a Raspberry Pi um, you can use something as in small as a nano which is 10-15 bucks um, and you can control multiple um, tablets off of it so no need to go on every single tablet and configure the pictures you can actually centrally control it off of one server all your tablets will basically point into one server and the picture frames will be displayed there so in order to accomplish this what I've done is I've gone ahead and actually created a docker image and if you just go on hub.docker.com search in picture frame in the search and you'll find this one here um, it's very straightforward I've tested this on the Raspberry Pi 0, 3, 3 Plus, uh, and 4 as well. Um, I've also tested it on Mac OS. Now if you want to go ahead and use this for Mac OS, you can just go onto the Docker Hub itself, go to the Docker file, reconfigure this, and run it for Mac, and it should run perfectly fine. Um, outside of that, all the instructions are here that you need. Um, so I'm, I'm going to quickly show you how to set this up. It's going to probably take us five, five minutes tops to set this up. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So first, I'm actually in my Mac uh, computer here right now. I just find it's a little bit easier to do here. Um, I'm using Jump Desktop for those that may be interested in understanding how I'm actually using my Mac live right now. So I've gone ahead and SSH'd into here. Okay, so now if you see, I've got nothing in here. So I'm going to go ahead and make a directory, and we'll call it PicFrame. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just demoing this to show you what it looks like. We're going to CD into PicFrame. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a uh, directory called image so just make dir img okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a docker file so we're gonna type in sudo nano docker file yaml or we'll call it docker compose yaml now in here all you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead here and copy and paste this and put it into here now I've already got something running on port 5000 on this specific server so I'm just going to run it on port 5002 and I'm going to go ahead and close this out so what this is basically saying before I close it out is it's uh, within the container itself there's a directory called app slash static slash images that's where the image itself or the, or the code itself is going to read the images off of what it's also saying is let's create an image file on our local directory and that's where we're going to put all of our images um, and then anytime, for example, let's say you have a power outage or whatever it may be, your server goes down. Every time your server goes back up, this is always going to restart, so you never have to worry about going and restarting this uh, specific server. So let's go ahead and exit this out. And the last thing we really have to do in order for this to work is we have to go ahead and move some images into this image file. So if I go to CD IMG, right now I've got nothing in here. So what I've got is I've got a whole bunch of these images here of just some dogs. So I've got all these pictures of just these dogs that I'm going to go, dogs and cats really, that I'm going to go ahead and transfer over into this, uh, onto the server side. You can very easily just use the Samba server and use a GUI to do it. You're not going to have to do it this way through code. Um, you should just be able to file transfer it on your Mac or, or Windows or whatever you're using. So let's go ahead and move some of those images over. So let's clear this out and I already got the command here. It's basically a secure copy file. I'm copying everything that's in this image folder and then moving that over into basically this. So right now, like I said, this is empty. As soon as I execute this, you'll see all the images have moved over. And now we're just gonna go back one folder and there's our Docker compose file, there's our image and we're ready to go. So we're just gonna type in Docker compose up, tack D basically detaches it so you don't have to worry about um, seeing all the code here and once this is done this is going to go ahead and run on port 5002 
Now, it may show port 5000 here if, if you do run into that. Don't worry about it. That's just the way it's configured in the code. Um, what we're really looking at here is Docker PS, and you'll see that it's actually running on port 5002. I've got an older instance of this running on 5005, which I should probably shut down. But anyways, 5002 is where it's all running. So let's go ahead and open up a browser and head over to that URL. So it's 192, and then we're going to go to 5002. And now you see basically there's images here. And what's going to happen is these images are going to change every 10 seconds. And you can go ahead and put images of your kids or your pets or whatever you want to do. The nice thing, like I said, is all you're going to do is you're going to take your old tablets and you're going to point it to this server or this address here and just let it run forever. And it, it shouldn't time out. You shouldn't have any issues. It's very, very lightweight, so it can run. I've even tested this on the iPad 2, which is the oldest version of the iPad that I have, um, and a couple of old Kindle Fires, and it works perfectly fine. There's no lag, nothing whatsoever. So if you're wondering what to do with some of your old tablets, instead of using them as paperweights, try to go ahead and configure a picture frame on there and just have them running and create a nice little picture frame for your tablet, hang it on the wall, or you know whatever you want to do with it, um, you have the ability to do that. Now the browser of choice that I use is actually something called Dolphin. It's a free application you can download off of the App Store. Sorry for the shaking camera here. Um, but once you got Dolphin up and running, the nice thing about it is once you put in the IP address, there's an option to go full screen. So this already has the IP address as you can see over here. And now let me go ahead and show you the full screen. So you push the settings button, go to full screen, and now you have a full screen running in the background. And again, you control all the pictures off of your server, so there's no need to go and you know fumble around with SD cards or anything like that. And like I said, you can have as many as devices as you want on this, so that's really cool. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you do, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.